He didn't lose. Says who? He just didn't lose. Do you believe the election was stolen? Yes. Do you have faith in elections now? No. You just heard from Trump supporters who still believe 18 months after January 6th that the 2020 election was stolen. I mean, some things truly never change. So that was a snippet from CNN's Donny O'Sullivan reporting at two competing rallies in Arizona. One rally featured Donald Trump and candidates that he endorsed, and another rally featured Mike Pence and different candidates that he endorsed. So they both endorsed competing candidates here. Donny O'Sullivan talked to all of them, and as you're going to see, they're all pretty insane, but predictably, the biggest loons that the GOP has to offer flocked to Trump's rally like stank on shit. Let's watch. At Trump's rally, a bonfire of conspiracy theories. Have you watched the January 6th hearings? I have. What do you think? I think they're a bunch of bullshit. Why? Well, because do you have both sides, or are you getting one side of the story? You mean like the side that attacked the Capitol? You really believe that happened? I was there. Okay. I have a lot of people that were there too. And? And saw things that it wasn't what they say it was. But there's been hundreds of Trump supporters now charged. I don't know if pled guilty. So, so, and do you think it's right for those people to have those people in jail? and not get think? any justice in our American system? Are you kidding me? Do you think it was right that they attacked the Capitol? I don't, they didn't. That was an inside job, buddy. That conspiracy theory that those who stormed the Capitol were not Trump supporters is widespread here. Have you guys been watching the January 6th hearings at all? No. No? <laughs> no, we saw it when it all went down, and then we saw like a lot of the BLM and the Antifa people in the building as well, and and, and it's just it's just nonsense. As but all. I think like 800 people now have been charged, right? Yeah. None of them are Black Lives Matter or Antifa. Yeah, that They're doesn't not charging mean anything. Them. That doesn't Correctly, mean they have not been country. brought into court and for their due process because they have not been arrested. Uh, Hunter Biden hasn't been arrested. Trump has told lies about the election in that. He said he didn't really lose. Do you think that all the lies about the election are damaging for American democracy? You believe he lied? Do you not? No, I do not. I don't. Why he won? But these are no longer fringe ideas. A majority of Republicans do not believe Biden legitimately won the election. I don't trust our government, first of all, period. And if you don't have fair elections, what good are they? Do you ever worry that you're wrong? Do you ever worry that... Oh, absolutely. Yes. <laughs> Do you ever worry that maybe yes. Trump has sold you a lie? Yes. And <laughs> if you start researching and believe that you're the one who's wrong and that you're crazy, which I did do, thinking, yeah. okay, maybe I'm wrong and maybe I am being brainwashed and believing something that someone's telling me, but then you go in and look the other direction and you find lies after lies after lies. So that last couple there is really interesting because for a moment, it was brief, but just for a moment, they became self-aware and thought, wait, Maybe we're the brainwashed ones. I mean, in a way, I want to give her a little bit of credit. Not too much, but a tiny bit of credit for being introspective. Was it for a second? Yes. But she was, nonetheless, introspective. And if the light pierced through the clouds for a second, maybe there's hope for her. Maybe one day she could become self-aware and permanently escape the delusions. But... It's hard to say. Uh, it's it's interesting because she talks about how, well, you know, I started to question myself, but then, uh, you know, I looked into the other side and I just found more lies, lie after lie after lie, except the problem is that you found more people that confirmed your existing bias. Perhaps you, you know, strayed a little bit far from your delusions and then you felt cognitive dissonance. So for purposes of mental comfort, you retreated and you sought out sources that affirmed the beliefs that you were already predisposed to have. I, I don't really know, but I mean, the fact that for a second she was like, maybe I'm brainwashed and maybe everyone else isn't brainwashed and maybe we're the ones who are in the wrong. That's really interesting because I haven't seen that before. It's pretty binary in terms of what I've experienced based on, you know, different reporting. Either you are a Kool-Aid drinker and you believe the election was stolen, or once you step out of that camp, there's no going back, you know? So it's just weird that you can see the light and then you just, you, you, you go back into the cave. 
it's astonishing. Um, now, also, the other lady was really interesting because you could tell that she was one of the more delusional people that Donnie had spoken to because she claimed that she's watching the January 6th hearings, which I don't believe, but she said that they are bullshit. Why? Well, because, uh, you know, it didn't happen. Her response, like that hubris when she spoke to Donnie O'Sullivan, oh, you believe that happened, idiot? And he says, well, I was there. I mean, to accept what these people are saying, you literally have to deny empirical reality. You have to deny what is in front of your face. Oh, what's that? You see a bunch of raving lunatics storming the Capitol on January 6th? Well, that didn't happen, actually. Maybe it was CGI. Maybe we all imagined it. But they're just, they're wrong. But then she kind of had to backtrack a little bit and claim, okay, it happened, but I know people who say it's not really the way that it was portrayed or it didn't happen the way that it portrayed. I'm paraphrasing her, of course, but... I mean, at this point, I don't think that it's uncharitable to call these people delusional and stupid because that's where we're at. You can't have a reasonable conversation with people if they exist and operate on a different plane than us. Like their reality is completely different than the reality that all of us experience. So how do you have a conversation with that person? How do you bring them back to reality? I don't think you can. So all you can do is shame them into, I guess, either changing their mind or shutting up about their stupidity. Call them stupid, make fun of them. And that might be the only hope for them. Even if it sounds crass and dickish, that's the only thing that you can do. Sometimes you have to shake people to get them to wake up. Not literally, like physically shake them, but like metaphorically shake them and say, hey, you're being fucking stupid. And maybe that'll work. Maybe it won't work. I, I'd argue it probably won't work on most of them. But if there's any chance when you're that far gone, I think that shaming them and calling them stupid might be the only way to uh, get through to them, assuming there's any brain cells left that will uh, be able to rub together. It's not like I want to do this. I would rather have a civilized conversation with these people. I mean, when I say want to, I don't want to, but I would rather us collectively as a society be able to speak to these people on just normal human terms as functioning adults are capable of uh, of doing. But you can't hear. You, you just, you clearly cannot. They've demonstrated they are incapable of having, of having logical conversations, having reasonable conversations because they're, they're delusional. So you, you can't talk to these people. They're too far gone. So you can either try to shame them or just ignore them. That's it. Now, um, I love the same couple who had a moment of clarity. They tried to blame this on BLM and Antifa, but they were caught like deer in headlights when Donio Sullivan said there's been 800 arrests. Not a single one of them have been from BLM or Antifa. Now, they're going to explain that away and say, oh, well, that's because, you know, it's biased and there's a cover up. So there's always going to be some answer to a fact that's presented before them. But I mean, that should be really damning if you're trying to be objective, as that woman was trying to be objective. They both conceded that they've contemplated whether or not they were wrong at some point. So could you also not think, hmm, maybe this is a little bit weird that there's no evidence that Antifa and BLM were there and it was all Trump supporters. I mean, they don't think. That's the problem. There's no critical thinking skills there. And when there is a brief moment of self-awareness from these Trump supporters, they retreat back into their, you know, metaphorical caves. So, yeah. Now, let's get to the Penn supporters. Still delusional, but leagues, leagues, leagues more rational than Trump supporters. Do you believe the 2020 election was, was stolen? Uh, no, I don't believe the 2020 election was stolen. I believe that there are aspects of the 2020 election that were unfair. I voted for Trump twice. If uh, Mike Pence runs, I'm voting for Mike Pence. Okay, so why is that? I just think that, you know, everyone's seen the January 6th committee. Uh, he stood up for democracy that day. You know, he's like, I'm not leaving the Capitol because um, I need to be here. And he was the one that was making phone calls to the military and trying to fix the situation while Trump was crying in the dining room. But even among this crowd, there is sympathy for Trump's election lies and support for a 2024 run. You're about to see Pence speak here. Uh, Trump's not a big fan of him right now. I understand that. I hear that he could have not certified those results pending all the claims of the fraud. And I wish he would have done that. It doesn't matter if he was stolen or not. If the Republicans want to take back the House and take back the Senate and then uh, all, uh, eventually the White House, they need to move on. He makes a pretty interesting point that I agree with, actually. He says, even if you agree the election is stolen, 
you have to move on because it's hurting the party. And he's absolutely correct about that. Now, he, I'm assuming he was moved a little bit by the January 6th hearings. And the reason why he was at the Mike Pence rally was because he supports Mike Pence, because he views Mike Pence as a hero, as a sort of savior of democracy. And on one hand, I'm happy that he came ultimately to the correct conclusion that the election was not stolen. But on the opposite side of the same coin, I hate that the way that Trump supporters are reaching this conclusion is by deifying Mike Pence, by deifying ghoulish individuals like Liz Cheney. I mean, they're Republicans, so they're going to deify dipshits and ghouls. But, I mean, is there some way that we can, like, find some middle ground to where you don't deify Mike Pence as a savior of democracy because he literally did nothing? In fact, he aided and abetted Trump for a large portion of that. And he had no authority to overturn the election. So even if he wanted to, he couldn't do shit. So is there any middle ground where you can agree that Mike Pence at least acknowledges reality with regard to the election? I mean, he's a fundamentalist Christian nationalist, so there are issues with reality there. But either way, like, can we at least agree that he was correct about the election, but still not a great figure? Well, no, because even if you get these Trump supporters to admit that Trump lost the election, they're going to gravitate to some other horrible candidate, a fascist like Ron DeSantis, a Christo fascist like Mike Pence. You know, they're going to go to the next shitty person. But I think that there is a discernible difference between Trump supporters who are living in some alternate reality in their own heads and the people who just have odious views that I vehemently disagree with. I would much rather try to deal with those people than the Trump supporters who are completely delusional, because at least the folks like that Mike Pence supporter, I feel like you can probably have a conversation about him, about our beliefs. I can tell him why his views on abortion and gay marriage and healthcare and the economy are wrong. And, you know, he would probably disagree, but at least you could have that conversation. But if you tried to have that same conversation with a Trump supporter, they'd like fucking start foaming at the mouth and, and they'd scream at you and they'd, they'd shit their pants. So there is a difference there. And I don't think that it's, you know, good or wise for the left to try to obscure those differences because it does exist, even if it does seem marginal to us from an ideological standpoint. But either way, if Republicans gravitate towards more sanity, even if they're still out of this world, an extremist, I'll take that over the Trump supporters who are just, they're out of their fucking minds. I don't know what else to say, how else to describe it. I mean, they're out of their fucking minds. Do yourself a favor and click the join button on YouTube to become a member. Because Mike's doing a great job getting to watch his videos before everyone else is tremendous. Many people are saying this. Join today, folks. You won't regret it.